Hello and welcome, I'm Serodan and we're going to be getting straight back into another secret revealing video. This time, you'll be getting the hive mind mount. So, why would you want to put your back out trying to get this mount? Well, it does have its perks, like the fact that so little people currently have it, and it's a very strange looking model, I mean, brain with tentacles, a bit strange. But more so, you can fit a load of people into this mount to increase its overall speed by 10% per person, making you speed all across Azeroth. Nyaum. Okay, great, so now I've enticed you in, make a coffee, and let's begin. So step one. Like any other secret, the start point is always stumbled across out of mere eagle-eyedness. So to start off with, head over to Shatterath and find Grifter over here selling all of his goodies. One item there is, is a talisman of true treasure tracking. Buying this will make you a secret finder detective. And putting it on, you will start to see some changes. First being the glowing objects on the table behind him. There will be a red fish, a yellow pyramid, a green feather, and a blue letter. Each of these will direct you onto a different path to take. It is worth pointing out at this stage, before you try any of the hard bits, you will need a group of five people to complete this secret, and you only need one person to go and do each of these next set of clues. The fish on the table referenced Vashir, so let's go over there first. And now keep this necklace on for the remainder of this secret. Step 2. Get in the monocles. What you have to do here is play around with some currencies to be able to buy the final red monocle. To start this chain of events, make sure you have a water mount or potion of some description. It's going to involve some quick moving around. Now you have this, head over to Sir Finley Murgleton. You'll see he's got these strange things to sell, and these very strange currencies. And to get these currencies, all over Vashir are eight different vendors, and Finley. But notice that the currencies all have a timer on them, so they will not last forever. This is why time is very important here, and that you know exactly where to go and what to buy. So look in the description of this video to find the coordinates. Paste in the first currency section and prepare yourself. Some must-have add-ons to be able to do this would be to have TomTom -tom and Paste. TomTom -tom for the coordinates and Paste so you can bung load of waypoints in at one time. Okay, let's kick this part off. Firstly, buy 500 seashells from Sir Finley Murgleton and bear in mind that you'd have to buy a few stacks to reach this number. Then go to the Volatile Violet Scale in Abyssal Depths and exchange them for 100 Cavity Free Great Shark Tooth. Go to the Manta Stargazer in Shimmering Expanse and exchange the Shark Tooth for 50 Razor Eel Lava. Go to Lil Whaley in Shimmering Expanse and exchange the Lava for 250 Well Fed. Dr. Fish. Go to the Gloomy Bluefin and Abyssal Depths and exchange the Dr. Fish for 10 freshly malted crab skin. Then go to Old Fish Breath in Kalfar Forest and exchange the crab skin for 50 Glittergill Glitter. Now we have this currency to get for. Go back to Sir Finley Murgleton and buy 80 seashells. Next, go to the Gloomy Bluefin in Abyssal Depths and buy two giant, giant toenail clippings. Now go to the Little Carp in Abyssal Depths and exchange the toenails for four Makrura Eye. Then go to the Volatile Violet Scale in Abyssal Depths and exchange the eyes for one accidentally severed seahorse fin. Oh dear. Go to the Crimson Angerfish in Shimmering Expanse and exchange the fin for three shiny sea serpent scales. Then go to the Manta Stargazer in Shimmering Expanse and exchange the serpent scales for 40 symbiotic plankton. Now, go over to Sir Finley Murgleton and exchange the glitters and the plankton for five scintillating murloc skin lotions. This currency lasts for an hour, so you have plenty of time with this. 
Now for our second main currency. Buy 300 seashells from Sir Finley Murgleton. Go to Old Fish Breath in Kelpfar Forest and buy 30 Vantus Black Squid Ink. Go to the Blackfish in Abyssal Depths and exchange the Squid Ink for 30 Super Slick Eel Slime. Go to the Volatile Violet Scale in Abyssal Depths and exchange the Slime for 3 Rock Encrusted Whelk Shells. Then go to the Little Carp in Abyssal Depths and exchange the Whelk Shells for 5 Potent Gastropod Gloops. Finally, go back to Sir Finley Murgleton and buy 1,500 seashells. With this, go to Lil Whaley in Shimmerin Expanse and buy 300 very pretty coral. Go to Old Fish Breath in Kalpfar Forest and exchange the coral for 100 iridescent shimmeray skins. Then go to the Crimson Angerfish in Shimmerin Expanse and exchange the skins for 20 luxurious Lux Scale Scale. Go to the black fish in abyssal depths and exchange the scales for five captured captured cavitation bubbles. With all of these, you can now buy your red monocle. So head back over to uh, Sir Finley Murgleton and buy it before the currency drops out your bag. Now time for that green monocle. This is probably the easiest of the monocles to get. Well, now it is at least. It was rather difficult trying to figure this one out. In fact, it was the last one to be solved. The green feather pointed us to Skyreach and Spires of Iraq. So head over there and clear the whole dungeon. You don't have to kill the boss, but up until the last boss's room, to his right, there will be a console and some basic instructions, which are anything but basic. But moving over to the console, pressing the middle button will activate and reset it. Upon activating it, you will see a grid of colours appear right before you. And back to the console, the buttons around the middle button will direct the eye of the direction. So move into the top one, move it up, right, right, down. Yeah, you, you, you understand. But rather than changing all the colours, we just need to input a sequence to this. And the sequence is right first, then up, down. Up, right, right, up, left, down, up, left, and down. Doing this will spawn a chest in front of you, and there you have your green monocle. That wasn't too bad. Well, now. The yellow monocle will sure take time out of your day. Now because this is a yellow pyramid, this took us to Old Ear, to the Halls of Origination. Straight after the first boss you will come across the elevator, and underneath are some interactable objects. So let's go down there. And to go down there, go straight through the north door and through the gap to your right. Once down there, hit the middle, and this is when the fun begins. Because all of these nodes you see all around you, they will light up. And you have to get them all to be the same colour. And to do this, you're going to have to hit these reflectors, which will change the colours up to the next reflector in the directions of which the spikes point. So, look at the reflectors, have a little bit of a play around, and again, notice those spikes pointing in different directions of where the light beams will ping off to to change the colours. As I said, this will take some time. There is an add-on to help you out, but if you wanted to do this for yourself without any aid of an add-on, then the best hint I can give you is to start with the outside row. Then move one row in each time. Make sure each row is the same colour before moving on to the next. This way, I've done it in around about half an hour. Getting to the middle rows, to the last, well, middle to the last rows, you will notice that they will start to match up nicely, and this speeds up rather well. Once all the same colour, everything will disappear, and a chest will appear containing the yellow monocle. Now, time for the final monocle. The blue letter. Clicking this near Grifter, you will read... The key factor in successful WASP ignition is a solid ad campaign. 
Now this turned into an anagram of all the words that started with capital letters, and anticipation for Deathwing was discovered in this. This led people to the Prepfoot compound in High Mountain. These people believe that Deathwing will rise once more. And funny enough, there is another letter on this crate which reads, Of all guys' cures for nature, the most liberating is death. That's cheerful, isn't it? And the anagram concluded from that sentence is Seat of the Guardian. Guardian being Medivh. So head all the way to his chambers in Karazhan, including old Karazhan, by the way, including the chessboard, and in his bedroom there will be a letter sitting on his chair which reads, I sat dumbfounded watching as the most subtle rat reaches for the cheese a third time in under an hour. Okay, bit of a strange letter, not so sure what they're trying to get through to the next person reading it, but Bramble Undead was discovered from this one which took people to raise a fen downs. Clear all the way to the end and you'll be able to find this next note sitting behind deaf speaker Blackthorn. There will be a letter on this box, which reads, Miss Sin will accompany you down the longest streets of the underworld. Okay. This led to Mistress of the Nest, to be seen, which leads you to Mount Hyjal, at the shrine of Aviana, the letter can be found on the top floor, on the table, and this reads, The elite champions will rule the world with the mightiest FC. Not football club, obviously. This translated to derelict flow, and this pointed to the dam between Ice Crown and Crystal Song Forest. On the top of the dam is a very well-balanced letter, and this reads, R.E. Codex of the Mastering Sign Waves. And this made Ox Residence. So this will take us to the Niseo Temple. Just here, resting up against this bow, is your letter. And this reads, Mice look so sad when they have a cleft lip. Hoping you succeed, Anna. And this was made into the Pinnacle of Magic, which took us to Calderar. And on the last ring, there will be a box. Get close enough for it to phase properly, and there will be your blue monocle. Look in the description for the coordinates to these letters. They can help out. So now we have these eyepieces, we now need to figure out, well, where to go to next. The place was actually discovered before even solving the clue. But the clue was in the description of the monocles. All of them had letters on there. Taking these letters out of an alphabet, printed twice, made the anagram Wild Withered. And these Withered were found in Suramar. Again, the coordinates are in the description. These Withered served a purpose for getting our next clue. And this is where you need your group. Take a closer look at these Withered. Their eyes are all different colours. Now put on your monocle, and the same colour eye as what the Withered is, and you'll see they will turn hostile. Well. A little bit difficult if it's a pile of meat, but it can bug out sometimes, just give it time. And upon killing these, they will start to cast Draw Energy. And this energy is taken from some beams located in a lonely room over here. When a Withered casts the Drain spell, the beams will disappear, so you and your group have to kill them at the right time, and kill them all at the same time for the beams to vanish. Have people in your group take the Withered down to around about 5-10% to 10% health, and then on count of 3, have them killed. But you'll have to be fast, they only channel their beam, their energy beam, for 6 seconds. And then you'll have to do it again. Once inside, it's quite tight in there, so you may want to position your camera quite right. Look behind the kitchens here, and you'll be able to see a lost cat toy. Clicking this will teleport you out the room and deal damage to you. The damage that was done to you is a code, so note down this 4 or 5 digit number. If you forgot, check the combat log. Next, you need to now reform with your group and head over to the Court of Stars. Kill the first boss and make your way over to this point, and inside this house is Lady Chatton who is very much a cat enthusiast, as you can see. Now, we need to be nice to these cats in here, 
and we do this by petting them a certain amount of times. And the amount of times is deciphered from the damage the person took whilst collecting the cat toy. Each cat will have a number. Mrs. Fluffy Muffins is number one. Shadow is two. Mew is three. Ash is four. Bella is five. And each digit of the damage you took corresponds to the times you have to pet the cats. So, as you saw, I took 19,650 damage, well, 19650, meaning we had to pet Mrs. Fluffy Muffins one time, Shadow nine times, Mew six times, Ash five times, and, well, Bella was bad, she got none. Poor Bella. What did she do? But the buffs the cats get only last for 15 seconds, and the buffs need to be on them at the same time. The easiest way to do this is to mark all five cats in the room. Assign one person to do one each. Start with the person who has got the highest number of pets to do, and count down. And when a player hears their number, they start petting their cat. And once everybody has their correct stacks, as soon as the buff expires, they will go all excited and spawn an orb, which everyone must click. The next puzzle is one I suggest you take really slow and talk over voice chat with the group. Firstly, mark all the players in the group. Now you notice there is a gap between our side and the other side, which we have to try and get over. And to do that, we hop over onto the platforms that will appear and disappear. Please look in the description for the sequence to this. Everyone's routine is the same as it stands, so following the instructions will guide you and your group to the other side. F means forward, L means left, R for right, B for back. Make sure you colour code these to match your group. It might be worth putting these on a note on your screen so you can call them out and take them off as you go. Finally, Yes, finally, you have got this mystical UFO and a bridge of nastiness. Here you will have a unique driver of this disc. So, unfortunately, you're going to have to figure out who this is on your own. Start off by trying to figure out which three people can cross over at the same time. You will know when you can cross because you will not be thrown off in the middle, basically. And when these people, these three people, have gone over, one person drops off, it does not matter who, you're still trying to find the driver because there was three of you. If you're successful or crossing over again onto the other side, have one more person jump off and one person jump on. Again, you're still trying to find the driver, but don't worry, people stay on the same side they came from if they are booted off. Once you successfully have one person go over three times, you have found your driver and it makes it a little bit easier to now mark up everyone now. So, mark the driver orange. Mark the person on the finish side blue. Mark the other person who made it through on the first journey green. Mark the person who replaced green with purple and then mark the last person with red. And then if you follow this diagram. So at this point, try and figure out who the driver is, the person who has stayed on for three successful turns. After that, mark the driver with orange. Mark the person who is at the finish at blue and the person who has just dropped off as green and the person riding the disc with the driver as purple, leaving the red marker for the remaining person. Now purple will jump off, blue will jump on, green will then jump on with orange and blue, blue will then jump off, Green will then jump off, red will then join. Red will jump off, blue will jump on. Green will jump on. And then everybody jumps off. Once everybody is through, uh, well, congratulations, you've done it. Have everyone stand on a marker, click the mount, and there you have it appear in your bags. This secret may not have seemed as long-winded as some of the others, but the fact that you have to cooperate with a group of people made it so unique. 
Now you can ride around with your brain hanging out and have other people jump in. A massive shout out to the secret community who spent many hours banging their heads up against their desk in solving this one. Full credit goes to them. But I can only wish you the best of luck and hope you get your brain mount soon. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next. But for now, take care. You see, you get a big group of people and drop them off here. <laughs> Everyone falls to their death. Well, I mean, you can try it. Maybe you get a parachute. I'm not sure yet. Let's give it a try. Just uh, jump up from here. Oh, oh yeah, you, yeah, you get a parachute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> big shame. Ah, <laughs> oh, wow. Never mind. Jump out now. <laughs> <laughs>